Now, if we initially look at the new selection tools, here you can see I've got a part on the screen, and the traditional way of selecting services in PowerMill is either to simply click with the mouse. You can see that visually we've changed selection. In the past, we used to draw yellow wireframe lines. Now we highlight the surfaces in a brighter shading color so that we can clearly see which surfaces have been selected when the part is shaded. Now what I hope you can see is when I select these surfaces we have lots of small individual surfaces so selecting them can be tricky. In previous versions of PowerMill we would either click or drag some small boxes over them which could be time consuming. Control to deselect. So let's look at the new methods in PowerMill 9. If I just deselect everything, on the viewing toolbar we have a new option on the right hand side of the screen, select by dragging the cursor. Now if I select this, it's a single handed operation. I don't need to hold down the shift key or the control key. I simply put the cursor on the start of selection, hold down the mouse key and drag it along the surfaces. So selecting chains of individual surfaces like this is really made much faster and easier. Similarly, if I just drag the cursor over here, I simply select those two fillets which happen to be made up of large numbers of surfaces. So selection is made really much more simple than it was in PowerMill 8 and before. If we now come to the changes we've made to the block, let me just switch off that for a moment and I'm going to raise the block form. And if I draw the block, you can see that I've calculated the block to the exact extents of the part. Now in PowerMill 8, on the block form, we had the X min and X max, Y min, Y max, Z min, Z max. What we did not have in PowerMill 8 were, was the actual lengths. We didn't know the length in X, Y, or Z. A user had to calculate them. So if we were to tell the man on the shop floor, you know, the size to cut the piece of steel, this was prone to user error because we would have to look at the min and the max and to calculate the difference between them. Now there is a length field for both X, Y and Z. So the actual size of the stock to be cut is obvious. We can also change these values directly. If I just view from above and currently the X length is 200 millimeters. I'm just going to change that to 250. Now you will see that the block has been updated and it, it has equally modified both the X min and the X max. It will be the same procedure to change the Y size of the stock. Currently 366.94. We wouldn't ask somebody to cut a piece of steel of that size. It's not really necessary. So I'd probably round up that figure. Let me just say 400. Again, update, and we see that the Y minimum and Y maximum have been updated equally. Viewing from the side, I'm now going to look at changing the Z values. Currently, the Z maximum is minus 1. I'm going to change that to be 0 because that is the face that I will datum the tool. I want the top of the block to be Z0. Now the current size of the stock in Z is 53.56. Now I may also want to change that to be a round number. But I don't want to change the Z maximum so I will simply lock the Z maximum and then change the length, let's say 60. Because the maximum is locked, PowerMill automatically understands that it can only change the Z minimum. Okay? So the exact size of stock, in this case, width 250, length 400, depth 60. 
the user cannot make any obvious errors when telling the person who will cut this stock what size he requires. Another area in Power Mill 8 and before that users could easily make a mistake was when using tapered tipped tools. Now let me just open the new dialog in Power Mill 9 for the tapered tipped tools. And for our users that regularly use this type of tool, I assume you will notice the difference immediately. In Power Mill 8, we had this parameter at the top, taper angle, set to 6 degrees at the moment. And also in Power Mill 8, we had taper height, so the height of the tapered portion of the tool. What we didn't have in Power Mill 8 was the bottom taper diameter. This is the diameter at the very bottom of the tool. Now, when people went out to buy one of these tools, that was the parameter written on the box of the tool, not the taper height. So in Power 8, the user had to do a little bit of mental trigonometry. And of course, this could easily use, uh, it, it could easily lead to error. Now, we have these two hands and a calculator in Power Mill 9. What this basically means is, from the three parameters, the user may enter any two of the three. And the third one will be calculated automatically, the one with the calculator icon. We can move this icon to any one of the three, simply by clicking it. Now, typically, in the real world, it is the taper height that we do not know. We typically do know the taper angle, and we typically do know the taper diameter. So I'm going to change the taper diameter here to 6 millimeters, And you will notice that the taper height has updated automatically. So this dramatically reduces um, the potential for a user calculating the wrong taper height, and therefore potentially ruining his part.